Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in this evening with On the Virtual Road with the Rolling Res Arts. My name is Brian Parker. I'm the program manager of the Rolling Res Arts. Um, a few quick things about the Rolling Res Art. It is a state-of-the-art mobile classroom, business training center, and mobile bank. The Rolling Res Art, or the mobile unit, excuse me, is a 32-foot retrofitted shuttle bus that brings art to the people. And we primarily work on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation here in South Dakota, uh, as well as the local communities. Um, yeah, so please, uh, welcome. Thank you for tuning in tonight. And I want to hand it over to our guest artist. Take it away. Hello, everybody. Hi, I'm Cynthia Masterson, and I am here in Seattle, Washington, but I'm originally from Oklahoma. Um, I've lived about half my life in both places, and it's, um, yeah, and uh, I'm from the Comanche tribe of Oklahoma, and I love beads. <laughs> I just love to bead everything and anything. And um, somebody told me today, if it, if it doesn't move, bead it. <laughs> That's my friend, Andy Thompson. I don't know if he's watching tonight, um, but he's, I met him through another friend, uh, John Jones, um, who I met up here in Seattle. And they're both incredible beaders. Um, I've been beading since 2003. Um, when I lived in Oklahoma, there was someone at my church that produced videos, um, and maybe you've seen them there. They were on VHS tapes. I learned how to bead from this VHS, or VHS tape that someone at my church made, uh, and it was called How to Bead, and he gave me the video, and then I moved up to Seattle. I never watched it. I don't know what happened to the video, but then when I was a student at University of Washington, I asked the library to purchase the, um, the videos and they did. And I checked it out. I watched it and watched it and had to rewind and watch it um, for the style I do, which I'll get into in a little bit. Um, let me get my teaching stuff. So I have, I do um, a stitch and a lot of times I just call it this stitch because everybody calls it something different. I mean, you can see it here on my necklace. Um, here's an example of, this is actually a set, a salt and pepper shaker. Um, but you see the style on a lot of regalia, dance bands, shakers, ceremonial objects, anything that's round like this, you know, you can bead on there. And so um, I learned how to do it and I've been doing it for a long time. Um, the gentleman I mentioned, John Jones, I don't know if he's watching, was a big help to me in learning. Um, but also back in the day from powwows.com, powwowbum49, I don't know who you are, but he was on a message board and answered a lot of questions for me and got to read a lot of stuff. This was all before the internet and Facebook, really. Um, 2003, I think Facebook was just starting, YouTube was just starting. So there weren't a lot of resources like there are now to share and learn. And so that's kind of my motivation for wanting to share and document and teach this style because it's not very well understood um, by many. And um, this is the big question I always have. Is it gourd or peyote? <laughs> and the answer is both. Um, you ask anybody what this style is and everybody tells you something different. Um, I'll refer you to a video through the Burke Museum called Burke at Home. It's called, I go through a big stack of about five books and everybody calls it something different. Um, so, so yeah, so let's see. I don't know. Any questions yet, Brian? Okay, and yeah, anybody, if you have any questions, you can put it into the chat and Brian will pass it along to me and I'll answer it. I love to answer questions. So um, if they're easy questions, if I know the answer, if I don't know the answer, I don't like the question. So I'm gonna be flipping back and forth between this camera and another camera. So I'm gonna start by telling you, well, let me, let me talk, go back to this, the Gorder Peyote. 
Um, what I've been told is that it's actually the same stitch depending on how it's used. Um, the word peyote comes from the Native American church. Um, they use peyote as a sacrament. And, um, but then we also have gourd dancing that originated with the Kiowas and then Comanches got it. Um, and so you see this stitch on a, both regalia ceremonial objects in both things. And so I've been told that if it's used in Native American church, it's peyote, but if you use it in gourd dance, it's gourd, <laughs> even if it's the same stitch. Um, but there's also another stitch that's also referred to as Gordon Peyote. There's actually many stitches called also referred to as Peyote. And so it just makes it really confusing. So let me start by showing you this picture. Um, oops, wait, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go to this camera. Okay, so, so here's what I'm doing. Is this actually, this is what I'm doing. So this is two styles of what I'm doing. And I call it three drop because you're going one, two, three, one, two, three. You can actually go up with the three. This is another style that people call two drop. And to me, it just looks like a zipper. So it's just going up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, let me show that to you in something close up. So this is actually that doesn't look great on camera. Let's show you this one. Uh, yeah, that's better. So you can kind of see here it's going one, two, three, one, two, three, it's stepping down. So while I call this two drop, here's actually another style people call two drop, where you can see there's two beads put on at a time and it's going down. And you could actually do this with three beads at a time. This is super rare. You don't really see a lot of people doing this style. Um, but then here is, and it's really, you just have to know what you're looking at. Here is just the, the one drop or two drop. My friend calls it one drop. I call it two drop. It's going up, down, up, down, up, down. So, um, let me switch back to me. That. Let's do me. Okay, so I have stopped my video. There I am. Okay, so with this stitch, the main difference it is in the chevrons right here. In in this style, in the this what I call two drop versus this style, what happens is the lines in the um, chevrons and the two drop are perfectly symmetrical. You get beautiful designs that are even, you just can't get it with this stitch. And so this stitch, you can kind of see the chevrons are just a little asymmetrical, a little off, still beautiful, but just a little different. Um, people also want to know how the beads stay on. Um, I like to tell them with math and physics. The only thing holding these beads around here is doing a proper count of the beads to make it tight all the way around and then proper tension all the way around to make them stay on. If you tried really hard, you could slide this off, but I've done it pretty tight, so it's really not going anywhere. Um, so yeah, any questions yet, Brian? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, so let me show you a little demo of how this starts um, and tell you a little more. Okay, back to my camera. All right, so let's see. This is something I started working on. This is actually um, the COVID pattern in three drop. And this is pulled from a bigger design. I'll show you later on from a bigger piece I did. Um, but right now, let's show you uh, two different things. Where'd my other example go? Hmm. I had it not too, oh, here it is right here. Okay, so let me show you this first. Okay, so 
With this stitch, you have to know math. I mentioned the beads stay on with math. Um, this pattern here is repeating every three beads. It's going one, two, three, one, two, three, all the way around. So if you just look at that red row, the pattern repeats every third bead. But when you look at a pattern like this, the chevron, it's six, the pattern is six wide. Let's see if I can get my thumbnails on there to show you. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. Looks kind of like a backwards check mark. And that is six wide. So that means you have to get a number going all the way around that is divisible by six. And that's because the chevron repeats every sixth bead. Now with this one, you could do a number divisible by three, but you couldn't do a chevron and it be even all the way around. You could do a chevron, but it's gonna be weird. There's gonna be a part in the middle where it doesn't meet. And, uh, oops, I just bumped that. And I can actually show you that. Let me show you. Um, I did have to fudge on a pattern. Okay, so this is a bigger piece I did. There it is right there. So I wanted to do, I did this COVID pattern and then I wanted to do these as masks. But this mask is a weird, I can't remember what the number is. It wasn't even all the way around. So I had to cheat it and just do an extra three beads right there. I don't, I don't, I didn't like doing that, but there was just no other way to solve this problem of how do you do a mask and it with the math and just all the other patterns. So, so that's the math. And if that made your eyes go buggy a little bit hearing math, I have a YouTube video and I go over that really quickly. Um, so, Oh, got my thread tangled. Okay, so I'm going to do a starting row. I've already gotten a little bit. I've already counted. I already know that this is 30 around, which I love 30 because then what you have to do after you've calculated your number all the way around, you have to take off one third. And so taking off the one third is completely different from the number divisible by six. Um, you take off one third to start creating that three drop. So I did 30 around, took off a third, which is 10. Now I'm going to start adding them on. Uh, I colored my bead, my thread pink so you can see it a little better. So I strung them all on. I actually skipped a step. I went through all the beads once. And now I'm going to start my starting row. The starting row is the hardest. Once you get past it, it gets easier. And it's even harder when you try to do it on camera. So let's see how far I get with this. Okay, so I picked up a bead. I'm skipping a bead and then I'm going to go through a bead. And again, I have all this on YouTube video. Um, and actually Longhouse, Evergreen State College Longhouse is um, gonna release a long one, a really long one where we make, what did I do with my keychain? Uh, we're get, you make a keychain kind of like, kind of like this. Um, but anyway, so, so I'm just skipping a bead. Here's my thread coming out. I'm skipping a bead, going through a bead. Now this is just one of at least four ways you can do this stitch. So if you look at the direction my beads are going, they're going down, down, down. And my work is going from the upper left over here to the lower right over here. But I, if I wanted my beads to go a different direction, whoops. Oh, it's not very tight. There we go. Um, you would actually, so my thread's going underneath the bead I skip, but if you want your beads to go a different direction, your thread goes above. So if you can see that it's going above and it won't happen now, but it'll happen on the next one. 
where you see the three drop, I guess it would be the three up, go that way. Okay, so here's my thread. Usually the way I do it, it goes underneath this bead that I'm skipping. But if I go up, now, oh, it didn't skip the bead. Oh wait, there it goes. So now it's going up, it's going a different direction. Whereas before it was going that direction. So the direction you go depends on if your thread's going this way or if I put it on counterclockwise going this way, that way, and then whether you go above or below. Um, so I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna do the whole, oops, I stopped my video again. Um, I'm gonna stop for a second because it's hard to do that on camera. <laughs> Any questions yet? Yeah, we have uh, uh, Tanisha said she hasn't beat it since she was young and would like to know if there's any suggestions for best practices to start back up. Oh man, I think the best practice is just start. <laughs> um, and just kind of educate yourself on the traditions of your nation. Um, you know, this, this style is really unique to Southern Plains tribes. Um, the, the, there's a style, a European style of this where it's more like that zipper style. Um, but somehow when it got to Oklahoma, we switched it up to do that three drop. And so, um, so, I mean, I'm just really grateful that that's in our tradition and I just, I love doing it. Um, but yeah, to start, uh, I, the Facebook groups are great. I love, I call them inspiration pieces to just look at pictures of beadwork um, and, and just find the style you want to do. Um, I'm kind of a one hit wonder with beading. Like I can do my style really well. Um, ask me to do a rosette and it would turn out really bad. <laughs> um, loom work, I can do a little bit of loom work. Um, lane, lane stitch, it just so frustrating to me because I just love in this style how everything just gets pushed into place, comes out so perfectly and my lane stitch is always a little bit off. Um, but yeah, I would just say, um, Find what materials are available to you. And um, yeah, just just start. I um, When I think back of how I got going, I mean, it was just so hard. And I can actually show you this box. So like, I never throw this box away. So this is my box of failure. <laughs> um, and I don't know why I just never, throw it away, but like there's all kinds of stuff in here that just didn't work out. And um, for one reason or another, it's just a tangled mess. And I couldn't tell you what happened. Like, you know, I guess this one, I don't know. I think I just didn't like, I don't know. Maybe I didn't like it. Maybe, um, maybe I got off on something, uh, but I guess, okay. So that's the other thing I should tell you too. Uh, okay, back to demoing in this style. Um, so let me just, as I talk, let me get back, let me just get this row finished. Um, and then I'm going to talk, tell you about the trickster bead. Um, because there's one thing about this style that you can make a lot of mistakes. Um, and I, I have gotten pretty good at fixing mistakes, but, um, and while, while I'm talking, I'll just put it back on my, whoops. Oh, there we go. Wait, nope. There we go. Oh, the camera's not working. Hang on. Hmm. All right, I lost my Epic cam. Let's see. 
book is locked. Whoops. I've lost all my, oh, there it goes. Okay. All right, we're back. All right, so my, whoops. Let's, there we go. Okay. So with this style, like I said, you can make a lot of mistakes. You can skip a bead, you can accidentally put on a bead, you can mess up your pattern. But the way this goes is, whoops, hang on a second. There's this thing called the trickster bead. Hang on, I have to take this off for a second because I have gotten my thread tangled. Um, I call it the trickster bead. And if you don't, I've also heard some traditions call it the ghost bead. But, um, oh, and look, here's a mistake. Okay, here's a mistake. This is my mistake. So if you look, my thread is a loop and my other threads going through the loop. I don't feel like that's in focus. Let's see, let me move that. There we go, okay. So I'll just fix that, I'll go through there without hitting the camera, sorry people. Um, okay, so I'm getting around to where I started. And I didn't really mention this bead right here, this one right here is the first one that we put on the round. I'll put a little dot. That one right there. So I call that the trickster bead and it's tricky because every round has its own trickster bead. It changes every round. So here's my last bead I'm getting ready to put on to finish this round. My thread's going under, I'm skipping a bead. And if you look at how my needle's going, my needle is just wanting to go through that trickster bead. But if I didn't go through that trickster bead, let me show you what happens. So you have to finish every round by going through the trickster bead. So I haven't gone through it yet. Here's my thread coming out. Wish I could get in just a little closer. Let me try to get in a little closer. Focus, ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so here's my thread coming out. I put on the last bead of the round. If you look, there's just one bead right there. There's space for one bead. And then now I'm going to go through the trickster bead. Sorry, that camera is shaking. Okay, so now, now look at the thread. There's two beads. There's room for another bead. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to get a sip of water. Okay, so, so that's the starting row. So now I'm gonna put on another round of 10 beads. Now, this is my first. Now this one is the trickster bead. So if I just go, keep going through. So I actually learned how to do all those other different directions because both of my parents are left-handed. My mom's actually watching right now. I see her name up there and we're going to bring her in in a minute and she might talk about um, some of the history of how we got beads because I'm just not that great at talking about it. Um, but I wanted to show when I first started giving lessons to people, I wanted to be able to show my parents who are both left handed and um, none of their kids are either, which I don't know what that means but um so that's how i learned how to do those different directions okay so look at this now i'm on big bead 10 this is bead 10 this was the trickster bead from the first of the starting row 
but now this one was the starting the trickster bead Wink. so every time you do a round the trickster bead changes and so once again it's like your needle and your thread just kind of tells you to go through that because when you start another round like here's this is the first bead of the next round and the trickster bead look how your needle goes your needle doesn't want to go through another bead unless you're just starting out and you're just not really sure what you're doing and you angle like that but you don't really want to angle straight across you want to go down like that so now you can see how a row forms this dark blue um, is a row. It takes three times around to go do a row. Um, any questions, Brian? No questions at the moment. All right. I hope people ask questions because I don't know how. I don't know. Beating is slow. It's very slow. Oh, and it's nerve wracking when you're doing it on camera for people. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's just very, um, I don't know, it takes, this takes a lot of concentration. Um, I think any beating does really. Um, but yeah, this is a little, doing it at this angle for the camera, it's a little hard. Um, so I was mentioning the chevron. Well, actually, I'll mention this first, kind of to answer about a good way to get started beading. If you're wanting to learn the style, this is what I tell students, and I, I don't know if they follow my advice, but I get it if they don't. Um, doing rows after row um, is the best way to learn this style. And so it just rows, like doing this pattern to start with, where you just do row of row after row, because then you can see how the pattern forms. If you make mistakes, you can practice fixing mistakes because there's a lot of tricks to this. Um, everybody just wants to jump right to chevrons and complicated patterns. Um, and this is easy, but just do do a project with just rows to start is a good way to start. It does. It is kind of boring, but um, But it's a great way to learn. Um, let's see. Hmm. Okay, we're 30 minutes in. We're halfway done. Um, let me see what else I can show you. Um, I mentioned Okay, so I mentioned the tension of how this stays on just by being really tight around the object. Um, this is the two drop zipper style I was telling you about. Um, this, let me see. All right, this can come completely off and it kind of holds its structure um, because because of that two drop, it just has a little more um, foundation inside to make it hold its shape and possibly the thread that they use makes it a little stiffer. Um, I don't have anything that slides off to show you because it will just fall apart. But if you slid this off, because that three drop, it makes it like a netting inside and it's just real loose and it just kind of, it'll just kind of won't completely fall apart, but it doesn't have, it just is different from this. So that's another different thing about that. Um, all right, well, we can go back to this. Um, let's see, somebody just messaged me on Facebook, but I'm not gonna look at it. If you're messaging me on Facebook while you're watching this, I'm not gonna look at it until it's done. <laughs> Um, no questions? 
Darn, I want people to ask questions. I'm running out of things to say. No questions, just uh, we have a Nicole saying that, thanking uh, First People's Fund for giving you this platform and saying that you're a master at your craft, um, mixed media, contemporary artist, as well as an entrepreneur. And then we have a Wendy thanking you for the info on the trickster bead. And she says she thinks that will help her a lot. Oh, good. Oh, we have a new question. Uh, Yay. What type of thread are you using? Ooh, okay, I'm gonna switch to me for this one. Um, so, where's my video? Huh, it won't let me switch to me now. Huh, okay, I've lost my video, but you can still hear me, right? Okay. Well, maybe it'll just pop back in. We'll just wait a second. Okay, so thread. And by the way, thanks, Nicole. I will send you a check in the mail. That's my friend, Nicole. I know her. <laughs> but um, so let's see. Let me mess with my camera again. All right. I don't know why I lost my camera. Okay, so thread. Oh, my gosh. Thread. If you go to any... Oops, wait. Start my video. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um. So let me get out some of my thread. Thread, could I could talk about thread for the next 30 minutes, but I realized I didn't plug my computer in. So let me plug my computer in because I think that's why the camera went off. Okay, get my plug in there. Okay, so thread. Let me show you another drawer. I wish I could show, bring this over to you. I have a drawer. Let me get, I have three drawers of string. Okay, here's, here's one of my drawers. I called that one string. So I wouldn't get it confused with the other drawer of string. But um, let's see, let's pull this one out. Oh, that's not it. Where is it? All right. So this is a pretty classic thread. I think it is. Nope, it's not. That's not the right one. Um, oh, this one is. Okay. This is a big one of Nymo. Um, is that in focus? Okay, so this is a big spool of Nymo. Um, this is a thing, I don't know where I got it. I think it might have been like on vegetables or I don't know, but I, I got that and I just cut it to, to do that. Um, but this is just like the classic thread. It's the easiest to access, it's the most affordable. Um, it's Nymo. It comes in different sizes. This is size B. Um, and for size 11s, this is a great thread. Oh, I had to talk about bead sizes later. So from being on those message boards, I have gotten really hot on Fireline. Um, it's a fishing line. Um, this is, I think, the smallest one you can get. But it just feels a little bit different. Where's the, where is it coming out? It's just real silky, um, but it just doesn't stretch at all. And if you're used to beading and having some stretch, it feels a little weird, but man, it does not fray. It does not break. It's really cool. Um, and you can find it at Walmart, even though we have no Walmarts in Seattle. Can you believe that? We got Fred Meyer. But um, I got this uh, at um, Shipwreck Beads, um, which I'll talk about in a minute because you might want to know where to shop for stuff. Uh, so Nymo, if, if Nicole is still on, do you remember this? <laughs> She'll get that. It's old. So, um, so Thread, Nymo, um, this one that I pulled out is actually a Japanese called Eslon and I tried it it was fine but it's kind of expensive and harder to find but there are just so many threads for this stitch I think Nymo or Fireline um, I 
don't have it right now. Um, but for fringe, don't ever use Fireline for fringe because it just kinks up and it looks weird. Um, so let's talk about bead sizes. Okay, so this is a size 11. Let, and let me grab something that's a little smaller. Hang on. Um, that you could see the difference. Okay, so this is a 13. Um, so the beads come in, well, let me step back a bit. These are Czech seed beads. And in a minute, we're, we'll loop my mom in and she can better explain the history of how we got these beads from what was then Czechoslovakia in Oklahoma. I mean, how did that happen? I mean, to me, that's just insane that we got these beautiful items all the way from across the world in Oklahoma. Um, but they come, they used to come in like teeny or tiny sizes, like 26s. Um, the bigger the number, the smaller the bead. So this is an 11 and you can kind of see it's just a little bit bigger than a 13. Um, these are pretty much the two standard sizes. You can get a 12, but there's just not the color selection in 12s as there are in 11s and 13s. Um, you might also hear the word Charlotte's. So both of these, like as I move them, I don't know if you can kind of see that little sparkle. Um, these are cut beads. And it, again, it's a little inconsistent, the naming, but what, as I understand it, 13 cut beads is a Charlotte. And I don't know why that name, where that name comes from. Um, but then, you know, your other bead, these seed beads come in all different sizes. And let me grab another. Um, oh, here's some purple ones. Okay, so these are a six. So there's my price tag from Shipwreck Beads. I'll tell you about Shipwreck Beads in a minute. Um, but this is a size six. And that this is the 11, that's the six. And so it's kind of funny in this style of bead, it means 11 beads to the inch, but it doesn't mean as strong on a string. It means stacked up and down. So like if you look at an inch of beadwork, that's 13 stacked one on top of the other. So when you're doing your designs, you can say like, okay, I'm gonna have 13 rows um, to an inch. And so you can measure your piece and do a little pattern design. So like here, it's gonna be 13, you know, for an inch. Um, so those are a little bit about the bead sizes. Um, yeah, bead sizes, thread, history, I don't know. Um, you want to bring my mom in to talk about how we got beads in Oklahoma? Sure. Um, there's one quick question though. Yeah. Uh, do you use any predominant colors or, or like what's your favorite color to use? Oh yeah. Let's see. Oh man, did I lose my video again? Hmm. Hey, do the, Brian, do the thing where you ask me to start my video. Cause when you did that before, start my video. Huh, okay, so predominant colors, this right here, these right here. I mean, pretty much everything I do has this sky blue background, those fire colors of that fade either, and I'm always trying to figure out which one I wanna start with blue or red or like fade into white or fade into yellow. Um, but yeah, that's my predominant color. And then um, that background of blue is pretty, Stylized, uh, stylized Comanche, and I, but I've heard that, um, and then you see it too when you go to Oklahoma that a lot of Kiowas have similar colors, but their background is white. So, so yeah. Okay, so mom, can, did you start your video? Uh oh, she's got an echo. Are you there, mom? Yes, I'm here. Okay. I don't know why you have an echo. 
I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Is it an echo for you, Brian? I can hear the echo, but uh, huh. I don't know. Am I echoing? No, you're not echoing. Okay. Um, hey, Mom, do you are you on your iPad or your phone? iPad. I'm on my iPad. Huh. Let me make sure our call isn't still going. <laughs> I don't think I would have not hung up with you, but no, that's not going. Well, I don't know. I think we might have to scrap it because the echo is too bad. Okay, that's, okay. Not, that's fine. <laughs> All right, I'm going to mute you. I'll Good. try to, okay, I'll try to recount what my mom said about um, when traders came up through Canada and the things they brought with them. Oh man, I got to learn that. I'm not even going to try. I got to get that down from my mom so I can share it better. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I was mentioning, uh, so there was the question of like how to start and it's, it's kind of um, like I mentioned, what's in your tradition? learning if there's any color use um, and then just getting the stuff. So getting the stuff is kind of the hardest part um, because you can sink a lot of money into this. And I, I, when I was starting and I didn't know what I was doing, I did buy a lot of 12s, which, you know, it's like you just don't, it's just not a good size to have. And so for starting out, you want to start out with 11s, get a size B NIMO, and uh, Nymo thread, and then just some beads. Um, I do have some kits that I put together. I don't really sell them anywhere, um, but I don't, and I don't know who's watching. Um, if I could like raffle one off or something or just, but get in touch with me um, and I could talk to you more about getting you some materials. Um, but I am so fortunate in this area. So I'm in Seattle, Washington, in Ballard, if you know your neighborhoods. Um, we have a store called Shipwreck Beads. It's in Lacey, Washington, and it's about maybe, well, depending on traffic, 45 minutes to an hour to get there from here. But they say that they're, they're the world's largest bead store. And maybe they are, I don't know. I've, but they're really big. It's like going, it's like the Costco of bead shopping. Um, but they're huge and you can mail order. Um, I recommend joining their newsletter because you'll get free shipping if you put your newsletter number in the um, order. So that's a nice little bit to save. If you're starting to do huge projects, you can buy kilos and get price breaks on stuff and they're always having sales. So right now it's a 30% off sale. But the other exciting news is that they just relaunched their website. Um, so I haven't fully explored it yet. They still have all the same merchandise, but it used to be really tricky to find the stuff. And so um, I taught a class over the summer and one of the one of the classes was supposed to be shopping the site. Um, well, and actually part of one of my grants, we were supposed to have a shopping day there and have lunch and ah, they're still closed <laughs> like everything else. Um, but, um, but I shouldn't be just like an infomercial for shipwreck beads. You know, there's lots of local bead stores um, that might be in your town. Um, but you might not be near a town and, you know, you're kind of relying on mail order and stuff. Um, you know, Michael's, Joanne, Hobby Lobby, I love those stores, but you just can't get the materials for this type of beadwork at those places. Um, yeah, so they're good for a lot of things, but not for our style of beadwork. So, um, you know, try to shop local if you can, um, but places like Shipwreck, Fire Mountain, Beads, um, gosh, I'm losing thought of all of the ones, but there's lots of mail order ones that are, can be affordable um, if you shop it on sale. So yeah, the other thing about Shipwreck, don't ever pay full price, always just wait it out for the sale. And like right now it's 30% off everything. and 
Um, I don't know, we have questions, any questions? Yes, we have a question. Um, are size 11s just easier to use than 12s or 13s? Ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. So um, yeah, size 11s, if you're just starting out, they are gonna be easier. Um, I didn't even show you this. So when I'm doing lessons, if you go to my YouTube, I do a lesson and like, this is how everybody starts out. And it looks really simple, but this takes about an hour and a half to do if you're just learning the stitch for the first time. Um, if you have worked with beads before, you probably don't need to start with this. Um, but this is actually easier for me to teach because I can see what you're doing when you're working with little beads and teaching. It's hard to see what if somebody's not doing it right. But um, but yeah, uh, 11s are easier because they're bigger and you can make mistakes and go through your thread many times. So in fixing your mistakes, sometimes you have to pass. It's like how many times the needle can pass through the thread wait, pass through the bead with your thread. And so with 15s, you just have to be a little more exact. You don't, you can't make as many mistakes um, with the 15s. So, um, and when you're first learning, they're just more expensive. And so like you saw my box of mistakes, um, just start with the cheap beads and kind of work your way up um, to using the cuts. Because uh, the price difference is pretty significant. Um, so, so yeah. Hope that, did that answer your question? Text in if it answers your question. <laughs> Any so, other questions? Uh, no, no, no questions coming in at the moment. Um, but uh, where can we find your work out in the world? Oh my gosh. Well, it's a lot of places right now. Um, um, so, uh, well, my website is probably the best place. Um, www.blue.beadwork.com, blue.beadwork.com. Don't ever put your website with the word dot in it. <laughs> but, um, um, you can go to my website. Uh, I'm on, I have a Etsy store. I have a YouTube um, channel where you can watch demos and kind of more in-depth lessons of how to do this. I'm on Instagram, I have Facebook, um, but I'm also exhibiting at the Washington State History Museum right now, virtually. It was supposed to be a real show. So, you know, so I do a lot of beadwork. I bead a lot of things and I make jewelry, um, but I've also, about the past year have been creating art, don't know what to call it, um, little assemblages of things. And actually, I think I can share my screen and show you the one that's in the History Museum, or should be in the History Museum. Um, if you were in my neighborhood, we did a walking social distance art walk on Sunday, and I set it up in the on the steps of our house, and people walked by and looked at it. It was really it was really cool. Okay, so where's, I'm gonna share my screen, but I think, where is, I thought I had it open. Okay, do you see that? Okay, so this is one of the assemblages that I did. Um, it's called Recipe for a Quarantine, and I beaded a whisk and I put it in this little vignette with an actual recipe that I wrote. And everything in there that you're seeing is represents something about the pandemic and being in quarantine. And so, um, so that's what, what I put together. Um, that's really just maybe about the third one of these I've done. I did one with a piggy bank and one with a butter churner. Um, but I have ideas for more, um, but it's just kind of a different way of putting beads where you wouldn't really expect to see them. So, um, okay, I'm gonna stop share. And so, 
I actually had recipes printed out of the, the actual on the recipe card. And so again, you can go to my website. Um, it's under the look. Um, you can see pictures and close ups and um, read the recipe and read, you know, kind of about it. But it was just, I don't know, it was just kind of a, we we're stuck at home and we had this whisk, we never use it, and I just wanted to beat it, and so I did it. <laughs> and then I just kind of evolved from there. Um, so, so yeah, and then um, normally, well, I guess it's August now. Normally, I would have gone to Oklahoma by now. I usually go visit my family many times a year, and our big um, gathering is in July, our Comanche homecoming, and we have a big family reunion around that. And um, so, so yeah, it's just kind of, um, I feel a little stuck up here in Seattle. I'm really far from home. It's always been not a problem just to hop on a plane and go home. Um, but, but, uh, now it's kind of, I don't know, but, um, I'm looking at that. I don't know if you can see the sun is setting. It's like illuminating my beads over there. It looks really funny on the screen, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, um, let's see what else I was going to show you. Oh yeah, here's the, um, so yeah, here's the whisk um, that I did. And I was imagining like if I really made something with it, <laughs> but it's really big. I don't know if you can see. I mean, it's like, it's just, it's a giant, it's a giant whisk. And we got it. My husband used to work at Borders and Borders Books and Music downtown and they closed. And when they were cleaning out the cafe, it's like they, that's what we got. So it's like our souvenir from Borders Books and Music. Um, but but um, yeah, everything that I have and use, there's always some kind of story behind it. It's not really just a thing. And so um, even my necklace, my mom didn't get to talk about it. So like, I don't even know if she remembers this necklace, but when I was growing up in Oklahoma City, that was our first where I was born and where we first lived. She worked in Indian education um, and had all of these beads and they were teaching beads to the kids. And I don't know if she actually made this, but it was stored in an ammunition box with all of the old beads and like, it still smells stinky like that box, but I still, I love it because it just reminds me of uh, being a kid and um, and yeah, so it's, and, and that I just managed to keep keep this for so long because that was a long time ago. And so, um, so yeah, I really love just finding objects with the story and telling the story about it. Um, yeah, and it's kind of a new, that's a new thing for me that I'm just finding ways to do that and, um, yeah, so, so yeah, I don't know. What else, any more questions? No more questions, um, just closing, closing thoughts. All right, well, yeah, I don't know. Do I have any closing thoughts? I guess that's it, you know, um, really, if, if you wanna learn this style, just do it. It's super hard. You have to have like a lot of uh, resilience and willingness to fail and screw up because it's so frustrating and you just have to keep trying. Um, but um, find somebody, you can message me. Uh, you know, once you figure it out, it's like you just do it. And it just seems like you always knew how to do it. Um, but it just like the getting there is the hard part. And so, um, so yeah, hit me up on Insta or Facebook, watch some of my videos. And um, yeah, that's, that's all I have to say. <laughs> well, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time and, and the demonstration. And sorry, Goldie couldn't, couldn't speak with us. Um, so that's going to be it for us for right now for, for this uh, virtual program hour. And uh, again, I want to thank Cynthia for stopping by and, and, and providing us with great knowledge and, and inspiration. Um, please check back with First Peoples Fund's Facebook page for upcoming art events, Native Artists Professional Development Training, and other good to know resources. You can also follow First Peoples Fund on Twitter and Instagram. 
Um, you can also visit our website, uh, firstpeoplesfund.org, to find out more about our programs, resources, resources, and upcoming events. And again, I want to thank everyone for tuning in, and I wish you all a great rest of your week, and please take care of one another and be safe out there. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. I'll call you, Mom. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Thank you.